Hello, Premiere Pro tutorial here. Just going to cover sending to After Effects. It's quite simple. Uh, let's just build a short little timeline here. Just going to grab a few clips of what I did. So we've got some clouds. Very nice. Um, but we might want to do some advanced color correcting in After Effects, or maybe add some titles. Um, there's a few ways to do it. Well, there's one way to do it, but you've got a few options. You could highlight them all and send them to After, after Effects, and what that would do is uh, put them all into one After Effects composition and replace each file, all three files, with a single timeline track, video track. Um, I grab the other files that we have. Then I'll show you the difference. So, I'm going to right click and press the place with After Effects composition. If you've already keyframed an object or altered some of its opacity, scale, just affect its motion, etc., then these will be transferred over to After Effects. It's going to give you a chance to save this project. I'm going to go to my desktop, just call it Untitled Project 1, press Save. And as you can see, it's brought it into the uh, into a new After Effects composition. And if we add some titles, click text and say. Add some text and say blue sky. Press this button here, this is going to toggle the aspect ratio, which is what you want. Uh, what that means is that the way pixels work is that this is the pixels that you have, but it stretches the pixels to create a widescreen viewing. So we've got blue sky. Gonna scale that up. Hold down shift to scale it uniform. So we've added our title here. And then Command S or shift, um, Control S if you're on the PC, that'll save our project. And if we go over to Premiere Pro, you can see that it's automatically updated. And you don't even have to save it. I'll show you that. Go to After Effects, put our title down here. You want to press this button to get our title action safe to make sure we're within our restraints. Click back over to Premiere Pro and look at that. Automatically updated. It doesn't even have to render. I'm playing that back. I mean, it's not almost fluid playback because, well, I'm playing on it on a laptop. Um, but this is just genius. Um, our footage, obviously. Um, it's a bit big, hit the S key, bring down the scale, like that. If we go over to this footage, let's put it on top of this footage. Grab these two, hit right click, ripple delete, and that will push it all along. Choose this layer, go to the effects controls, change opacity, bring that down so that we can see both our layers. Also, the motion, let's increase the scale. Then, select both of these, right click and replace with After Effects Composition. And as you can see, it's already got some of the deta um, details. Let's choose the layer that was on top. Hit S, we can see that it's retained the uh, scale information from Premiere Pro. And also, if we look at the uh, hit T for transparency, we can see that we've got the transparency there as well. We'd animate this maybe. Hit P, start recording. Bring it down like that. Good. 
that kind of little pair of power. You can see it's actually playing pretty well. Although, I've been told it's draft quality, so the quality will be weaker and I'll get a nicer playback. Also, we can grab these multiple clips, right click, replace with After Effects composition. And as you can see, we've got all these layers. If we look at our timeline, they're already lined up like that. Beautiful. And they're all good to go. So, I'm sure you can imagine the power of uh, this, that they, well, you, the possibilities. For instance, you could send each clip individually and color correct them, which is obviously a very cool idea. The integration's very cool. I don't know if any of you have seen the, uh, I believe it's called the Mercury Playback Engine that's been built into CS5. Very impressive. And that is going to really power this up. But yeah, no, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Uh, very simple to send to there. Also, if you had some audio clips, it works similar with Sound Booth. Um, in fact, let's grab an audio clip quickly. Let's bring our stabby hits up. Right click. Edited Sound Booth. And what you want to do is render replace. If you edit the source file, then it's going to alter the file, your actual file. Whereas you want to render and replace, which is going to create a new copy of it so that you're not messing with any of the original files, which is always what you want to do. So our file has now been imported, which is just what we want to do. And whatever we do here, let's just say we decrease the volume like that. We can see now that the volume has been decreased over here. Boost it up again. Press Command S just to make sure it sends, and then look at that. Beautiful. So I hope you see the power of Dynamic Link. I hope you learned something about it and its simplicity. I'll also be covering it with Encore soon when I do my Encore training series. So look out for that. Rate, comment, subscribe. Re recommend me to a friend, Dan, on a bouncy castle, and I'll see you guys soon.